All right, so if Daniel Radcliffe did want to finish up some stuff and do some Harry Potter things, then all I can say is it'd be good if he played his own grandfather. Because if it was his father, it'd be a little cliche and it wouldn't work anyways due to Dumbledore actually being super ancient by the time Harry Potter's around. So, like, then, you know, his grandfather could just do stuff immediately within the, the fabulous world of Harry Potter as it's been established through the Fantastic Beasts universe. Yeah, because the next movie... Having Daniel Radcliffe in it as his own grandfather, he could, you know, pretend he's a little older with, like, some color in his beard or something if he wanted, you know, or do it digitally. They can just do it digitally now. Um, whatever he wants to do, whatever he wants to play, it, that would make sense to me, though. And, like, um, the plot, I guess, is just that his family line is really, you know, compact. Their magic. Like, they eat magical foods and live really extreme off of adrenaline. They're like little, you know, native hobbit dudes that, like, <laughs> you know, bounce off of the walls with their broomsticks. So, um, we need that action. We need frenetic, like, like, Magical charged fists like appearing behind and around people, punching them to death. We need, you know, action like nightstick he carries that he beats the shit out of people and hits them in the balls constantly. Can they can they be like blue or purple fists? But they gotta have like the cufflinks, you know, on them for no yeah, the reason. Magical, they got like gloves, like magical and cuff links. gloves and cufflinks, yeah. Yeah, so they like go boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Yeah, and they make like, you know, like sort of like explosion noises, like they're breaking the sound barrier, you know? Yeah. Yeah, real violent and aggressive, like he's, you know. A little phantom glove little, cufflink you know, punches. A little too Scottish or something, I don't know. Um. Because I just feel like in juxtaposition to how gay the series has become, which is fun with all of the, you know, wizard frothy cum duels dancing around and spiraling. That's fun, but it's Devil May Cry-esque, but we need to then have him coming back and, like, making it feel more Harry Potter action again, like he always wanted it to be. I don't know. That's about it. Oh, well, continuing the tale of Gruntelwald. Yep. Yeah, so the point would be, you know, the cufflinks I already said, he's got, like, he summons, because, you know, he's throwing punches, so he throws punches. They have, like, blue or purple gas, whatever, like, coming off of them phantomly, all trailing through the air, and they come in and people, like, poof, in the head and, like, hit him, you know, as they're, like, running along through, like, book library full of books, you know, magic spells or something, for example. And he's flinging, like, under, you know, undercut, yeah. like, slam him in the nuts as he goes, Plah! Yeah. You know, like, if I was a stunt man, it'd be like, Plah! Yeah. You know, like, like that, <laughs> the and stuff, you know. And, like, right, his, like, his, his spell is his, pat stuff. his fucking spell is his Patronus. And he says fuck a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, what I was gonna add to that was, you know how the Lestrange character in, um, Harry Potter 5 introduced this gay-ass concept that they're all, like, gay-ass wraith morb evil spirits or something floating around magically and they're already dead because they're Death Eaters and they, they took it way too far, so this guy, he needs to use his Patronus gloves that are all silvery to, like, choke out a bitch you know when they're all flashing around and fighting in midair all gay ass you know turning to smoke and flowing around the room he just fucking reaches out like he's the green lantern and just like smacks a bitch out of the air and they slam into shit yeah because he's got giant comedic like butler like i said like butler gloves yeah like the, you know the leather and yeah. the cufflinks and they fly around and smack bitches out of the air and shit yeah then when they actually try to like come at him and, like, grab him as multiple people. Then he's, like, all full of Wolverine avocados, so he just, like, beats the shit out of them, like, slams their heads together. Yeah. It's great. Because we need, like, wizards that are, you know, 
more interesting than just flicking their Wiccan wands. Yeah. Because uh, that's that's good. But within the same <laughs> series, we can... Because they're obsessed with introducing weird magic concepts that were never connected to Harry Potter already. Yeah. So this is closer to what makes sense. To, like, control the scenario, basically. He needs to come back in with his big Harry Potter balls and, like, teach them that they aren't going to fuck up the movie series. Now they bring his avocados back into the franchise. Yeah. In a role that can be repeated whenever he needs to advance the plot. Yeah, for fun. Like, he's the Brad Pitt now, God damn it. Okay, so the idea that he came up with is that he would have an origin from Bolivia, so it connects to Fantastic Beasts, you know, Daniel Radcliffe, because that's where a bunch of magical creatures are supposedly from, yeah, and that's where he'd be filming... Yeah, Bolivian dragons and stuff. Yeah, that's where he'd be filming so, these other movies, so it lines up with them in good film time. There's always in the Harry Potter movies about how they're always looking for people. I was trying to snag even Aurors to work in Bolivia for these dragons and stuff. But then, because he's cool, the backstory is he comes into the plot like he's beaten up wizard cultists that are savage, you know. Yeah, that are trying to to steal magical creatures like usual because Bolivia is a magical place in the Harry Potter universe.